My talk is not about Draymond. Uh, <laughs> my talk today is about uh, mind mapping. Uh, mind mapping is a visualization tool uh, for everybody, and uh, I would like to connect. I would like to show you how to use mind mapping in the context of software development, especially in agile uh, development. But before that, uh, I would like to introduce myself and Japan a bit because. We have 90 minutes. <laughs> wow. So maybe I'll, uh, maybe it's going to be a, much, a, a little bit shorter, but um, I'll do a uh, first part, starting with a, a introduction, my introduction, self introduction, and I will talk a bit about Japan and Agile. And then go, I'm, I'm going to go into what is a mind map and why you are going to use mind map, the benefit you are getting from. And then I will do user wish mind mapping that capture users' wish into user stories. And I will do some demonstration uh, with Satomi there. And uh, I'll do a conclusion. <clears throat> Before I came here, I just did a bit of research about India and found that uh, this thing, Draymond, is so famous in <laughs> India. I was so surprised. But do you, do you know this cat is from the future? Oh, everybody knows. <laughs> wow. Then, do you know that why he doesn't have any ears? Eh? Reads minds? No, sorry. Because his ears wa were eaten by mouse. <laughs> That's why he hates. Mice, mouse, yes. Because I, uh, this thing is my elementary school days uh, character. I'm, 40, for, I'm 46 years old, but um, this thing was uh, when I was f six years old. So 40 years old character. I was so surprised. And also I will show you some interesting picture from Japan. This describes Scrum uh, in Japanese cartoon. Ladies, girls, Scrum. Isn't it fascinating? Like this? <laughs> and an interesting of this one, I really like this. Stakeholders looks a bit mean, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> so we are good at cartoons, right? And to Japanese, or to me, India is like a yoga thing, and a Krishna, or... Um, uh, what's the elephant? Uh, Ganesha. 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 Ganesha uh, is the famous god. Is, is he an incarnation of God? I, I'm, I'm not sure, but um, it's famous in Japan too. And to me, uh, India is like this. It's like... <laughs> we really love this movie in Japan. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I'm glad I, we like it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a bit of myself. I have been in this uh, uh, agile world for more than 10 years, uh, 13 years, like 13 years. I, and I, I'm a book translator. I int uh, introduced those books into Japanese, like uh, old C++, uh, Jim Copeland's book, and some extreme programming books like 2002 or three, and Mary Popendick's Lean Soft Development uh, books, and uh, Agile Project Management by Jim, uh, Jim Highsmith, and Agile uh, Development, Art, The Art of Agile Development by, yes, James Shore, yes. And I am a writer also in Japanese, uh, object-oriented books or uh, UML books, or design pattern books, and my mapping book in Japanese, sorry. And um, I recently published in this ju January, uh, Agile Development and Scrum, with uh, co-authored by Ikujiro Nonaka. Do you happen to know him, Ikujiro Nonaka? Somebody knows him? Okay, I'll tell you later. <laughs> and uh, I'm also a, uh, a CEO of a tool vendor called Asta, which uh, is a UML and mind mapping integrated tools. Uh, in this room, do you know 
how many of you knows about Asta? No. Jude, yes, it was once called Jude. Thank you, one. Uh, Jude is very famous in Japan and Brazil. Last year I visited Brazil and uh, I talked to the audience like this and 80% knows about this uh, tool. They are very keen to educating uh, object-oriented software design, so this software is mu very much used in uh, college or universities. And uh, this is Nonaka Ikujiro uh, Sam, I, who I together we together co-wrote the book, uh, newly book. And this is me, and this is uh, Jeff Sutherland, who uh, developed or created Scrum. The word Scrum is from his paper. The paper was call, is called this one, the new new product development game which is written in 1986. He studied Japanese way of new product development and found some interesting uh, aspects in it and described how fast Japanese can do new product development. Recently, we are going down, but in the 80s, we are going so fast. So he described to the to the world. That's his work. And here, you can see here. Stop running the relay, relay race and take up rugby. Mean, meaning that this picture is also from his paper. He studied uh, NASA new product development, then Fuji Xerox and Honda, and he found that NASA is development is gate phased. And Xerox has some overlapping area between the gates and Honda, those phases are almost merged into one. So this is a relay race uh, passing batons between the phase, right? And this one is scrum passing balls around and we together go into the, into the goal. So this metaphor was referenced by Jeff Sutherland and he, he articulated, he made, made words uh, on top of his words using his Scrum concept. So last year, I was uh, proud that uh, Jeff Sadran invited him to uh, Japan and meet uh, Nonaka-san. That's uh, what happened in 18, sorry, in 2011 in Japan. And this is an uh, overview of uh, the world of lean, agile, and Japan. Here is manufacturing industries. Uh, we are good at manufacturing or factory uh, producing things. So manufacturing industry in Japan, Nonaka-san first wrote this, the new, new product development game. Uh, by the way, there are two news, uh, but first new is new, meaning new, and the second one is new product. So it's about new product development game, which is new way of doing that. And uh, of course, we have Toyota production system. Is Toyota around here? Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, it's called TPS. Toyota production system is TPS. And it, it was analyzed and uh, abstracted into lean or lean thinking and applied to different industry areas a lot, services, healthcare, and a lot. And Mary uh, took this idea into Agile movement so that to explain how Agile is working well to executive or business people. So now the word lean and Agile is kind of combined to express uh, this whole movement. And uh, Kanban spawned or uh, spin-off from Agile. And Kanban itself is a Japanese term. Did you know that? Yes, oh, of course, oh, okay. So Kanban is a card yeah, passing around. So, and Lean Startup uh, movement came after that uh, from Lean and Agile. So uh, this is the picture of uh, the history I, I have. Uh, by the way, this picture is drawn by uh, Yasunobu Kawaguchi-san, who is working in Rakuten uh, in Japan. Yes. No. Oh, really? Yes. Can Vex hit so? 
Nunak Sun's paper? Good, good. Because uh, XP and uh, Scrum also have the same uh, parent called patterns. And the pattern, in patterns com community, Jim Coplin explained things, and uh, Ken Beck was the shepherd of uh, Jim Coplin, and so uh, socially it's very connected. Right, thank you. And I forgot something to say. <laughs> um, yeah, yes, and of course, ex extreme programming, the second, second edition of extreme programming has a chapter called TPS. So it, he is directly, di directly influenced by this uh, thinking too. Okay, and a short history, but I, I'm gonna skip. Uh, so left is Nonaka's text and Agile Scrum. But uh, most impo important part is he coined the word Scrum, but he is very famous in knowledge management. Knowledge management, uh, KM, knowledge management area. And he wrote a, wrote a lot of books. And he also studied American uh, US Marine, uh, the organization and strategy patterns. And he recently wrote in Harvard Business Review, Wise Leadership. All those are connected in his, in his brain. So I wrote uh, with him the links between Azure World and uh, this, his thought. So this is, it's uh, published in, in Japanese only, sorry. So if you, in this room, there is a publisher, please talk to me later <laughs> so that I can <laughs> publish this in, in, in English. And a, bit, a little bit of uh, statistics. I uh, tried to search, tried the search of Agile keyword. Uh, this is a trend, Google trend of Agile. <laughs> what, is it funny? <laughs> uh, because Google trend uh, is, uh, starts from 2004 or so, so the data starts from 2005. So India is always a uh, very high level. Yes, yes, so the uh, denominator is very big, right? <laughs> so my guess is that um, 2000, 2001 or two, India became, has some shoot up or soar. And now Brazil is shooting up. Do you know why? Why Brazil? Hmm. You have a friend there? <laughs> Oh. But, um, my work is oh, thanks. Uh, it was, you know, since oh, I uh, visited Brazil and found that they are doing Skypes and TV conf conference with co U.S. customers, so they can talk real time. I mean, not in Indian people cannot talk with U.S. people real time, or if uh, unless you wake woke up uh, late or <laughs> in the morning. So uh, what I'm going to say here is Japan is very low here. So I'm struggling with this uh, situation right now. Yes. I'm not sure. Yeah, she said more money came in at yeah, this timing. Yeah. Uh, this timing. Yeah. So this shooting is not error. It has some meaning there. Yeah, it has some meaning. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so yeah, geographically like like this. And I will show you some data I got from Agile, no, Scrum Alliance uh, last week. Uh, this is the number of uh, certified Scrum masters uh, by countries. It says U.S. is only, it's, it's out of scale, so uh, here, U.K., China, Denmark, Brazil, like this. And Japan, here, very few. Oh, sorry, this board should be, um, I can't do that, sorry. But India is like this, wow. So I think India is a lot ahead from Japan, so you are, you win. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, okay. Uh, that's a small introduction about Japan and Scrum. And I will talk, uh, this is my main talk from here. <laughs> so I will talk about mind mapping and uh, user story gathering from mind map mapping. So what is my, my, a mind map? Uh, British uh, person, Tani Buzan, uh, created this method. A, it's a, uh, how many of you taking notes with mind map, using mind mapping? Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. More than 10. It's a very good uh, number. Uh, in Japan, it's getting uh, popular now. And uh, it's a graphical note, note making technique. Uh, it's a co this, this shape of round, uh, radiant structure, or and it's a, to me it's a note taking technique. But uh, to Tony Buzan, it's more than that. It's more more uh, education, changing life, uh, changing people, uh, making mindset, and a whole whole brain thing is mind mapping. So, but I don't want to go into that part, but. Uh, I'm concentrating on this uh, note-taking technique today. And it's visualized thoughts in this radiant structure. And I, I will recommend this uh, book. This is, book is the Bible, uh, that mind map book. It's also translated, translated into Japanese, which you don't read. <laughs> and um, I have a book called Mind Maps, for kids, I strongly recommend this one. This one is the book. It, it has a very nice, nice picture in them, and good for kids. And I will show you later. If you somebody wants to see this, I'll pass this around. Okay. Why my map? Uh, this is a picture or text from Da Vinci. Uh, lots of people know about his things, uh, like he was left-handed or he can write in mirror or like this. Uh, but uh, here, he used those text and picture at the same time. So the, the great brains in the world are using pictures or drawings and text or words at the same time. So mind mapping is the shape, shape, and words at the same time. Um, Nobel Peace Prize, sorry, Nobel Prize winner Roger Sperry found that there is two cortex in your brain, and one is called right, right brain, the other is called left brain. It's not that simple, but this idea is uh, well accepted, and uh, still um, many Sci uh, brain scientists use this concept. And it says that right hand controls, sorry, this is right hand, right hand side, <laughs> sorry, right hand side of the brain uh, uses or uh, manages emotional expression and spatial things or musics or uh, creativity, imagination, pictures, drawings, images, instinct, uh, things like that. And, and a gestalt. Do you know this word, gestalt? Yes, gestalt is a whole. So uh, you, you look at things and capture it as a whole, as a picture. It's called gestalt. If something's lacking, you, have, you want it to fill this up. That's uh, uh, called gestalt. And Left hand side, I'm really sorry, this uh, screen should be up more. Um, left hand side is doing writing or language and scientific uh, thinking or mathematics and lists or making logics, making uh, rational things. So these two brains working together to be a human. So. What I'm going to say is picture and text at the same time is very meaningful to your brain. Tony Buzan used the word, it's brain friendly to use text and picture at the same time. I found uh, this very, very interesting uh, YouTube video 
which I don't show you today, which you see later <laughs> at home. Uh, she is a brain scientist, Jill Bolt Taylor. It's a TED uh, conference. A very, very enthusiastic, interesting. She once herself were, was attacked by stroke. So she is talking about how she felt at that moment. Very interesting. When right brain is uh, up, she felt the world is into me, uh, sense, sensing a smell uh, sh image coming to her, and all those are parallelly processed, and uh, no me in it. It's, it's just me or world, I don't, she doesn't know. So it's like emotional, just uh, image and thinking, just sensing. And when left side com comes back, he suddenly making decisions and orders, logics. And then right side, she was so uh, happy, <laughs> one of the part of the being part of the world. So she was describing this so emotionally, it's like an act, so you should see this. She is a brain scientist, so it's very rare a brain scientist was attacked by a stroke. <laughs> and she described in an analytic way how it was. So it's so interesting. So mind mapping. This is a mind mapping of mind mapping. <laughs> I will explain, I will try to explain. Okay, it's a note taking, note taking. Why do you do that? It says to see important thing, to recognize keywords, keywords, to see, to re recognize keywords. And it's in one piece, so structure is clear and it can be viewed quicker, and you can remember later as a picture this, this thing, this thing, this, this whole gestalto is in your brain, and you can remember thing. So that's why part, and how you are gonna take notes with this mind mapping. Uh, several things here, but I don't, I don't explain today, but, important thing is I show this to you and one month later when you see this you will remember today's context oh uh, oh that picture somewhere I saw and that was the agile India 2013 in some funny Japanese guys speaking in a room and something like that the context itself is enclosed into this Actually, it's not enclosed, enclosed in this. It's in your brain. Uh, Tony Buzan says that every experience is stored in your brain, but you cannot extract it. But mind mapping, mind map works as a index or key to that your memory, which is completely stored, but which you can't extract, but stored. So this works as an index to that big memory to review that moment as a uh, playback of DVD or something. So important thing is this picture works as a key and this picture holds this context or holds an index to your brain that holds context of this uh, moment. I use this like this. Uh, this is a picture, I'm sorry, this is a book uh, I, I like and I, when I read books I Try to make a mind map uh, as you uh, read chapters. So it says author, chapter number one, chapter number two, or so, and so on. Uh, when I, I didn't know about mind mapping, I just read and uh, what do you call this? Um, flip, uh, fold, dog ears, dog ears, uh, kind of like that. But, but, Yes, I, I found something in, in this book. I know that, because, but I cannot find any part. I cannot remember where it was described at, this, uh, uh, right, at once. Uh, after I, using mind map, I, I uh, stick this mind map onto this uh, front page or the other uh, back, back of the page to see, okay, what was this book? Open it, mind mapping. 
okay, that timing. Uh, at that time, I wrote this. Uh, I, I, it works as an index to your brain. So, okay, uh, that was in the, here. So, okay, I can remember all this, all the stories in it at, at, at once, at a glance of uh, mind mapping. So, I will show some examples of mind mappings. Oh, this is, because this is an agile uh, conference, <laughs> I took one uh, from Kent Beck's uh, XP second. He says XP is composed of values, principles, and practices, and so on. It's very nice, nice brush, brush painting here. Simple but strong. It's on the back uh, cover of the uh, XP second book. Uh, this one was, we wrote, we, we developed software. So we wrote a mind mapping for the uh, next release, so that we can remember the whole uh, next release, image of the next release as a picture. And this one is a, um, that about the talk I did uh, two days ago, you maybe missed, and uh, <laughs> it's a learning Kaizen from Toyota. And uh, I draw this mind mapping so that I can remember how to talk about, how to talk in the session. This one, uh, this one was uh, drawn by Bruce Taylor. Is he happened to be here? No, he is in the Agile India conference and he sent this one to me. This is strictly saying this is not, not mind mapping. It's, it doesn't have branches and it's not, it's not radiant, but a picture and words at the same time so that he remembers uh, the context or uh, knowledge in the air. So, and uh, this is a project Christmas uh, planning uh, mind mapping. I will show you some examples in my tool. Okay, this is a, it has a, a mind mapping always have center, some, some, some image is, would be nice so that you can remember the whole so this is this first branch is called BOI, which is a basic ordering idea, which works as a uh, framework of your thought. So this has uh, when, what, why, who, where, result. So six branches. It's an interesting because you don't talk about how but result. It's very. I thought it's very business oriented thinking instead of thinking about how, but result. But interestingly, this format, this framework, 5W and 1R, is introduced in this book, Kids, <laughs> for Kids, Mind Mapping for Kids. So this is a project Christmas planning mind mapping. When it's, uh, oh, it's quite old, but <laughs> 2000 somewhere, some, sometime, we do retrospective party. What are we gonna do this in this? Uh, we do retrospectives and demonstration of the beta two, and then party, self-introduction, cake, games. Why are we gonna do that? We have more communication, congratulation of beta release, and tour of uh, our project room to, to uh, customer, bring customers in and have fun. And who is gonna come? Uh, development team members and customers. Where? The project room and dining room of headquarter. And the result we expect would be customer satisfaction and build women relationship and good memory and so on. So this one page captures the concept of uh, project, uh, project Christmas party. Next one. This book, I uh, made it, I showed it late, uh, before. It's Sustainable Software Development, written uh, back. And it's about, author is Kevin Tate, forwarded by Jim Highsmith. And it's, it's about metaphor software. It should be from building to ecosystem 
to do that, he presents principles. Uh, two big balls and four small balls. Two big balls are feature and bank fixing. And small balls are working product, defect prevention, design emphasis, continuous refinement. And then juggle this ball to make software. And working product is, uh, there are some practices. And defect prevention has practices. And all those have practices. But what I'm going to say is, I just spent one minute for this. But you'll capture all those concepts instantly. And uh, you can remember this picture as an uh, image of the book. I'll, I'll show some more others. Um, I'll do my mapping a lot in the meeting, especially not for me, for audience, I mean for um, attendees to uh, keep them in one page. So the mind map for a meeting would be First, we prepare those things like item, uh, sorry, time, place, attendee, and conclusion is left blank. To do is left blank, and agenda here. And when you start talking, uh, this using this overlap overhead projector, you enter keywords what you are talking about so that everybody can see. Like this. Topic two, okay, blah, 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 you speak about this, and somebody speak about this. And you can add icons like, oh, uh, topic 10 is very interesting, or topic 11 uh, is, a, is a puzzling idea, or topic 15 is connected to topic 10, and topic 14 and around this idea should be emphasized to do later, or something like that. So this mind maps works as a minute or a, a captured uh, context of the meeting. And it, you can copy this one. I'll uh, edit copy. I'll show you this is a, essentially a tree structure, right? Tree structure. So if you just drag and drop this mind map into Excel, guess what happens? I will paste this, like, like this. Uh, it's a tree. So it works as a minute, too. Time and place, attendee, conclusion, to-do, agenda. And, uh, and also, oh, this is a tree structure in Excel expressing uh, abilities or qualities of software, usability, fix, efficiency, functionalities and so on. You can copy this, copy this tree structure into mind mapping. Uh, I would say software quality and paste it. Guess what happens? Like this. It's, it's tree structure so you can go back and forth. And good point about mind mapping is you can move around one thing. Like testability is now in maintainability, but I think it's in functionalities. So you can move this around. And stability here to here, or this here to here, like this. You cannot do this in Excel. So when you're doing discussion, you can gather ideas and moving around and connecting, gathering, clustering things. Mind mapping ver works very well. And uh, if you want to, uh, you can export to PowerPoint. Export. Guess what happens? It's like this. Uh, software quality, usability, so on. So when I make a presentation, I, I always make a uh, mind mapping first to organize your thought. And then, then going into details. Okay. This is how I, I use mind mapping in, uh, in daily work. And I'll show you some, some more. Some more. Uh, I'm a, I am a guitar player. So in order to remember the chords, I use mind mapping. <laughs> yeah. So this is a C major 
uh, Lydian chord. Uh, it has several forms, uh, root, string, root, sixth string, five string, fifth string, fourth string, third string, like so. It's boring to non-guitar players, but I like this mind mapping. Yes, I, I will. Do you play guitars? Oh, I will show, share this, yeah. And, hmm? Uh, a very nice question. This software is called Asta, and, uh, which I developed. <laughs> and I'm also selling. And uh, I'm happy to uh, give you for free afterwards if you would like to contact, if you contact me. And a uh, oh, uh, bit about this software. It's, it started as a UML editor software. But um, in Azure world, you don't, you, do you use UML? Yes, yes. We use UML, but UML is too strict. You always have to think about this dotted line or uh, arrows which way or things about that. But mind mapping is just keywords, so you're very quick to uh, type in. And a gather, gathering idea is much more capability in, in this mind mapping than class diagrams or use case diagrams or any other uh, strictly semantic, strictly uh, syntactic uh, notations. So I started using mind mapping in Agile context. So I will talk about this later. Next. But for the record, for, just for the record, uh, we have uh, like class diagrams or um, the state chart things, a lot. You can add classes, you can add attribute, you can add operations, and you can connect with relations like this. But I, I don't go into it today. Okay. Okay. And uh, one more example from this book, uh, Mastering the Requirements. It's written by Suzanne and James Robertson. It's a famous book about requirements. And uh, the authors uh, nicely sent me a mind map of a persona. Uh, persona? Do you know the word persona? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a imaginary customer, but concrete customer. So the persona person's name is Pam, and his, her family, and her work, and her hobbies, like this. OK, so um, about my mapping. It is keyword oriented. You don't usually use sentences, just keywords, short keywords. So it's easy to type in. It's very fast. You can uh, make notes quickly. And it has loose syntax and semantics than UML or any other software-related uh, technique. So you cannot, you don't have to think about it. The, the line only, only means association, so very soft relationship. But you can categorize them into one branches, or you can move it around. So it's very flexible, but loose syntax, and fast and easy. And it, it is one page, so it's high-level view of an idea. And um, one thing, when you take notes linearly, linear, linearly, it gets longer and longer, right? But in mind mapping, it gets denser and denser. So in one, one picture is the most important thing. So it, it, it can be uh, stored into brain. And it's evocative. Uh, evocative, by this I mean you can remember the context or the scene you wrote this mind map. So as I said before, your brain memories all this situation as a videotape, whole, your whole life. But you cannot access to that area of, of your brain instantly. So mind mapping works as a trigger to evoke that memory part. So it's like... Google search to your brain. <laughs> you have a mind mapping, you will 
Google search your brain to to uh, sorry I'm my English <laughs> extract or uh, to get regain <laughs> that uh, memory quickly. By the way, I use mind mapping when I do uh, wedding speech because uh, in the paper I, I don't use tools for that purpose. Uh, the the branch is, is like how do I met bridegroom and uh, uh, when he was in elementary school something and an episode of his bad things <laughs> and uh, some words from my friends and some uh, uh, nice words to bride or something like that. So I draw that in a, in a this size index card. I keep seeing it. And I, in Japan, we usually use train to go to the venue of the wedding party. So I close it into this uh, pocket. And on the train, I just look at it. Memory, memory, just memory. Ah, uh, OK, 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 OK. And the, in the speech, I don't see the memo, but visualize the memo in my brain. OK, right hand upper part, yes, OK, how I met him, OK. Then, OK, this part. So it works as a, also a index or a, a prompter, <laughs> prompter, uh, yeah, visual prompter for me to do the speech. And uh, the last one, explore and gather idea, is what we are going to talk next, is a group mind mapping or a, a interview mind mapping. I would say. It works when you gather idea from someone else. Like uh, minute, minute taking, note taking, I showed you uh, before, is a, uh, when you do a uh, conference on anything, you gather idea uh, into one mind mapping. So I'll talk about this then. Uh, usually I do some workshop but um, today um, it's full, so uh, if we have time, we will do this. But um, today I will skip this uh, icebreaker uh, workshop today and go on. Oh, but um, I would like to say that this is my self-introduction mind map, very simple one. Uh, Kenji is my name, so and I draw always a Japan thing because uh, here Japan is my identity and <laughs> it's very well. Um, um, and what or uh, favorite things and something else. Uh, you, can, you can choose those BOI. BOI is a basic ordering idea, those branches, first branches. But you can uh, explore and grow the branches. So I will skip this workshop, but um, I will show another example. This is a self-introduction uh, mind map of my friend Amano Ryo-san. And he, it says he likes uh, balloon. Actually, he's a pilot, and those flight those th areas. And he loves wine, and he said sake. And oh, sorry, beer, wine, uh, Japanese sake, everything. And he says here he likes cheese, and he likes soba as a noodle, Japanese noodle. And saying that cheese goes with wine, and soba goes with Japanese sake. <laughs> And uh, he says that he once had a stroke too. Interesting, but um, he survived the stroke. And so on. Okay, I'm going into an, uh, the agile context of uh, the talk. Um, user stories. User stories has been for a long time, and um, it's first used the term as story. As you know, Kent Beck didn't say user story, just story, because he the point of story is telling, not writing. So the, the word requirements is the most bad keyword in the software industry. That's what Ken Beck said. And he changed the word requirements to story so that you can tell to the people uh, by, uh, in person, I mean. So when you start writing, you write and write and write and write and you don't talk. So the point is just prepare a card and write a story, simple story, and stick it on the wall so that you can pick up 
and go to user and talk about it. That's the uh, original uh, idea of story. So uh, Ron Jeffries says this uh, term like uh, C, uh, three C's. So here's three C's of user stories. It's written on cards. So card is a, works as a note, a uh, key to conversation. So conversation is the key. So detail behind, what happened? The three C's of story card, user story. And uh, Mike Combe also says a lot about user stories. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very much. And he's always also talks about uh, user stories in this uh, user story applied. And he also talks, uh, says that shift focus from writing to talking is the good, uh, is the key. And a metaphor of trolling, which is uh, uh, written by Suzanne and James uh, Robertson in the requirement book I showed you before. Uh, the requirements can be captured with different size net. So if you have, if you, if you first try to use a fine net, you will lose. You will start from a coarse net to capture the uh, rough idea first, then mature the requirements. That's the point of the book. And somebody, which I don't know, uh, uh, suggested this format. In order to do something, as a someone, I want to do this. It's a called is one of the user story format. How can I move this up? I, I don't know. Yeah. Here. Here. Uh, in order to do something, as a someone, I want to do something. This is a canonical form of a user story. Very simple, but the point is this part. In order to do something. So you can do something else if you can d have this benefit. So you can choose between solutions. So that's one key to this uh, one idea in this. OK. So why mind maps and user story fit? So what I'm going to do is capture user's idea into mind mapping. So it's about shifting from, uh, from writing to talking and uh, trolling uh, the requirements by course size net first. And also, it's important to capture the context of the talking. Uh, you capture emotions or things. Um, once I... Uh, worked with a customer who wants to printing, who wants printing in Java application. At that time, printing in Java is very poor, so, but I can't do that. So customer was very angry about that first, but she said that, how, okay, I want, I, uh, if you have a printing, what do you do with that printing? She said that I will take this and move this counter and enter this into this here. She said. So I suddenly thought that we can easily move this data without printing from here to here by programming. So she and she said, "Wow." So the point is, when you capture just just uh, to do or requirements, you lose a lots of lots lots of information from that. Capture information emotion. She was angry or she was uh, confused about doing this, but. Uh, when you capture this, her, her emotion, I, can, I, I found that I can do something. So emotional thing is also important. Use your right brain, brains and colors and pictures so that you, you can remember what she's talking about in, in mind mapping. OK, so <clears throat> okay. from here, I would like to do a demo or a bit, or a short act here with uh, Ms. Satomi 
to demonstrate how I can do mind mapping with users. Hi, Satomi. Uh, pre pretend that I'm visiting her. She's a user of a system. And I'm doing a mind mapping, a user requirement capturing using mind mapping. Okay, okay. And here's your mic. Uh, this is a mind map I usually use for uh, capturing users' requirements first time. I am visiting a city library, which is in Bengaluru, <laughs> which I don't know, but <laughs> you should have one. <laughs> Okay, I'll start, I will start this skit. Uh, it's going to be uh, three minutes. Just g give you an idea of how I can do mind mapping with users, okay? Oh, nice, nice library here. Oh, hi, hi, hi. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock. Hi. Hi. Hello, I'm, I am Kenji Hiranabe. I have an appointment with Ms. Joba. Yes. Hello, Mr. Hiranabe. I'm Satomi Joba. Please call me Satomi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Uh, I heard that you are planning to uh, build a software system in your library. So I am here to talk with, with you about that today. Yes. Uh, thank you for coming all the way from Japan. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, by the way, on the way here, uh, some staff members of your library talk to, me, talk to me or say hello to me very nicely. I really like that. Do you usually do that? Uh, yes. Um, we have this program to greet customers and visitors when they come to greet and oh. uh, say hello. And um, this week uh, is a say hello week. We call. <laughs> <laughs> so we try to be nice and say hello to the visitors who oh, come in that's so they nice. feel welcome <laughs> and uh, want to come here again and often. That's very nice. Thank you. Uh, when I put this note here, I will uh, get back. I mean, get out of this skit. I will tell you something. Here, um, note. Uh, in the interview, this is a context is interview to users. In the interview, you say one good thing about customers first <laughs> so that your client will be nice. That's a one tip from, from me during interview. Okay, well, um, I often use mind maps to get an idea of how we can build systems. So may I take notes when you speak to me? Sure, may I see that? Yes, sure. Uh, this is a mind map I prepared. And uh, to avoid forgetting important questions and uh, answers. So there are four branches in this mind map. I'm going to ask you in this order. Why, who, when. Uh, but say anything you want to say anything you, 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 anytime you think of. Okay, great. Great. Note, uh, this type of interview, uh, it's a pre-written but uh, anything you can say can be captured. It's called semi-structured semi interview. Structured interview is like a, a filling forms. And a non-structured interview is just interview, but semi-structured is somewhat structured, but you can accommodate things later. So mind mapping is a very good tool for semi-structured uh, interview. And also, mind mapping is called semi-structured. Like database is called structured, it has metadata and data. Mind mapping, it has metadata and you can get data, but from data you can make another metadata instantly. So data, metadata is fuzzy. So that, that's a point of uh, a mind mapping too. Okay, to, Satomi, to begin mm -hmm. with, um, I'd like to ask you about the motivation of the system. Why did you think you want to introduce a new uh, system in this library? Well, one thing is the budget. Okay. We have wanted to this kind of system, which is very common in every library nowadays. Mm -hmm. And finally, we just got the budget through. Okay, so budget passed. 
good, good, good. Mm -hmm. And what else? Well, currently we use paper forms and records a lot of paper. It is very time consuming to deal with all the information by paper. Staff members here overwork every day okay. for this paperwork and I want to reduce it. Overwork. Is that happened to uh, this Bangalore area? Bangalore, uh, yes. Time? Yes, over okay. time. So you overwork. <laughs> so what else? Um, yes, another thing is a long waiting line of the book borrowers. Returning book is easy, but uh, when people come in to borrow the books, our staff members at the counter have to write a lot of information on okay. the paper okay. called borrowing form. So mm. borrowers have to wait for a long time. Okay, okay thank you. I just noted here your uh, uh, pain points. Okay. Thank you. What does this blue face mean? Blue face means I don't like, you don't like <laughs> this point. <laughs> okay. Pain points, I, which I call. That things I want to improve. Okay, good, good. Okay. So let me confirm. So overwork is the viewpoint of staff. Mm -hmm. And long waiting line is the viewpoint of visitors, right? Visitors, correct. Okay, like this. Okay, then um, I would like to ask you about who is going to use the system. Well, this system is mainly for our staff members called mm -hmm. clerk. Clerk? Yes, clerks are service staff at the counter who helps mm -hmm. the visitors borrow the book. Okay, counter. So clerk works... Counter. <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> Clerk serves a, a visitors, okay, staff called cook. What else? Who else? Um, uh, does, does, do visitors use this system? No. Of course. Uh, wait, yes, actually, yes. Uh, they may want to search books by themselves. Okay. Well, but the system is mainly a back-end system helping library staff. Mm -hmm. So don't think about visitors first. Main, we want to focus on the staff. Staff part. Yes. Okay, so visitors, I will say uh, future. Yes. In the future, you will. We'll visitors, like to so. talk about the, okay. yes. Okay, visitors, okay. And now, uh, you said clerk will use the system. Yes. Who, who else is using? Who else? Or when, when? When. When is it? Uh, first of all, when visitors borrow books. Okay, borrow books. As I mentioned earlier, um, visitors have to wait in a long line I to see, borrow books I at see. the counter. I see. Mm -hmm. And? Also, when they return books. This is an easy part, I guess. Okay. And? And maybe you don't know about this, but uh, there are a lot of work after the library is closed. Oh, you, af you work? After the library is Af closed? Yes, oh. after the library is closed, we work hard, like registering new books when they, they come into the library, okay. and also returning the return books to the, their original okay. shelves. So who do this book registering? A staff member Okay. called the librarian. Okay, so he's different from clerk, yes. right? Okay, so there is another uh, actor, I, I, IT people call Correct. this actor, but yes. I don't use the term. But um, uh, what was that? Librarian. Librarian. And he is registering a book, right? Yes. Like this. Mm -hmm. I, see, I see. I'm getting to see the picture. Mm. Oh, it is almost time. Isn't it? Oh, oh, oh <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's almost the time. <laughs> Or if you want to uh, go. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting confused about the <laughs> scripts. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, okay, you have other things, but I will ask you later. Okay. So, I will add some uh, homework part here. Okay. So that you can remember. Mm. One is uh, you list services for visitors. Yes. So, service for... Okay, and when would the next meeting is? How's the next Monday? Okay, so next Monday. 
May I visit here again? In Bangalore, yes. In Bangalore, or how about in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> Could do that. I'm okay. leaving tomorrow, okay? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, uh, I will uh, come to your library again. So uh, it's very nice talking with you. Thank you. It was nice. Um, Before that, okay. uh, may I uh, just go through quick to uh, to see what what was the uh, okay. interview like? Yes, please. Okay. This one, uh, city library. City library user story. Okay, I just use this one. Uh, this. Okay. So okay. So why you want you are gonna. You make this system. Mm -hmm. Budget passed mm -hmm. and paper form is so bad you mm -hmm. do overwork. And it, there are long line of visitors, right? Yes. And staff called clerk mm -hmm. is going to use the system. Yes. And librarian mm -hmm. also, also use the system. Yes. When registering book. Mm. And uh, visitors can be can use the system, but it's going to be a future yes. uh, discussion. Not right? right now. Not right now. And this homework here is you will uh, list the service, sorry, services for visitors, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Um, it was nice talking with you. It was a great start. I didn't see the picture of the system, but now, thanks to you, it is beginning to show up. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Um, it was not, not a very nice act, but <laughs> it's actually like that. So after this uh, mind mapping, uh, mind mapping like this will show up. So using this uh, why, who, when, and a <coughs> who part is used as a user role or actors in the use case terms. And when ideas is going to be a user story or use cases or anything you want. It's a, it's a scene when user is going to use. So capturing those things from users is, can be done in uh, semi-structured mind mapping with users. And this, this whole picture can be remembered by you and o also by the users so that next time you visit her, uh, bo we both can remember what happened last time and re reboot uh, the next uh, session. Okay, so I will do uh, almost doing the summary and um, how I can use this into a, a user stories. So this is a user story mind map I wrote from the interview. So there is a story called borrow book. This is, can be user story or, or use case, whichever you want. It says, in order to, do, in order to borrow a book, as a clerk, I want to read in book ID and mem mem member ID. This is not talked in that session, but later you will define this part. And return book use case says, in order to return book, as a clerk, I want to read ID, book ID and confirm member name. Or when register book, in order to uh, register book into system, as a librarian here, I want to fill in something blah, blah, blah. Or I want to search book in order to get information on the book to read the bookshelf or to borrow the book. As a visitor, I want to search book like this. So you can make a, a stories. And in order to, this is a, also a mind mapping. So I can just copy it and I prepare the user story mind mapping format in Excel. You can just paste it like this. Oops. So, so that you can easily uh, print it out. Or you can also convert this into a PowerPoint so that you can print out 
like this. It's a very simple format, so I can convert it into, this is a PowerPoint, but anything. Almost all map mapping tool has these uh, uh, features. You can drag and drop into Excel or anything. So this is a uh, use cases I draw from mind mapping. And this is a uh, user story mind mapping. I will show you how to do a uh, use case part. I'm sorry? Render. Yes, yes, I just uh, entered. I mean, I edited so that it looks pretty. <laughs> Afterwards. So ca capturing the idea is one important thing. And then you can discuss or uh, edit to make it more nicer format if you, if you want to. So, like this, a, I will open a use case diagram and uh, drag and drop this staff here as a actor. And also, you can drag and drop this uh, borrow book, return book, register book, this drag and drop into use cases so that you can draw this a use case diagram very quick. And there's a link here. You can double click this staff link to this mind map staff, or you can jump from borrow book. You can jump from here, sorry, from here to this, this here. So that you can go, go in between. Okay. Okay, so the big picture is like this. There is a user wish, uh, which is not structured well. So you go to users and talk using mind mapping and capture the context uh, which you and the user is living and uh, make a big picture as a mind map. So the branches would be like why, who, when. And from that information, you can make user stories or use cases. And then you can do estimation or uh, task breakdown or uh, planning or testing, preparing testing and like that. Okay, so the conclusion. Uh, mind mapping is effective when gathering information or exploring topics freely, which is not uh, formatted well. So my talk is about from, from a vague idea into more concrete idea using, using mind mapping, conveying ideas from vague, po vague area to a more concrete area. And a user interview mind map is semi-structured, meaning that it has branches preset, but you can add anything into it. And it gives you a high level overview of the system and creates a big picture of the user with, with the users, shared ideas. And who, why, who, when are the good questions, uh, first questions to the users. And this topic is covered by this a Sticky Minds article called my Agile Modeling with Mind Mapping and UML. You can search it by my name and Sticky Minds. And the whole idea is like this, from soft, vague idea into structured idea. And this is the last part. So I came from Japan. and. Um, I'm very glad to be able to speak here. So we are engineers, but um, we will make this software engineering world more better place. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, if you uh, want this software, ask me. I can give you free freely because I'm an executive. <laughs> uh, Windows, Macintosh, Linux. Yes, I am. Did you do it at an open source? Or no, not yet. Okay. So I will keep on contributing. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this for 11 years. Huh? I'll, you, I, I can send you a link from which you can download freely. Thank you.